Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about the June 2023 VHF contest. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott, call sign KE4WMF, and this past weekend I participated in the American Radio Relay League's June VHF contest, which uh, takes place on frequencies 50 megahertz and higher. I participated in a rover with my mobile machine back there, and you can see I've got my contest set up. I do not have the full exhibition set up if you've ever seen that. There is a point, and I've said in some of these videos, where less is more, so what's on the car right now is only what I need to do VHF contesting, with one minor exception. You might notice that I have one of my HF antennas mounted, and that's so that I could opt to do park activations for parks on the air, because some of the places where I operated were in national parks. Any state parks? Yes, one state park, so I wanted to take the option to do a POTA activation while I was out and about. So my plan for my Rove, it was ambitious. I always seem to, t to uh, bite off more than I can chew. And so my initial goal was to Rove in 10 grids. That was about 700 miles of driving in what would amount to be about a day and a half. Not quite, it wouldn't be two days, but it would be, it's doable if all I was doing was driving. But uh, yeah, I'll tell you in a minute why I did not make that goal. I totally mismanaged my time. So the contest started at 2 p.m. So that gave me plenty of time to finish my setups with the car. And then I drove to Virginia Beach to Red Wing Park. And that is just barely into Maidenhead Grid Square FM 26, Fox Mike 26. And I that's a slow going park for me usually. I don't remember if I made any voice contacts there last year. I might have made one uh, and it wasn't in June. It was in July, I think. Maybe uh, maybe the September contest, but that park usually is kind of a dud for me unless I'm working FT8 and I wasn't quite ready yet. But then it turned out I didn't get a chance to work it anyway. I don't remember how long I was there, but I accidentally blew a fuse. I have amplifiers in the car now and I forgot about that. And so I have my wiring set up to prepare for the installation of a second voltage regulator. And <laughs> right now I've got too much equipment on one circuit and I wound up blowing the fuse. No sweat, right? I'm gonna go into my, my spares container and grab some fuses and uh-oh, the fuses are in a different container that I decided to leave home for this trip. So I cut my stay at the park short, went and found an auto parts store, which yeah, that cuts into my time, but uh, I needed it because my radios were now off and I wasn't gonna move and borrow fuses. So I just went and I bought another package of spare fuses, got everything up and going. And then I went to First Landing State Park, also in Virginia Beach, but this was in FM 16, Fox Mike 16. And I made some contacts there. I was gonna stick around and activate the park as a parks on the air entity. But again, I, I was just mismanaging my time and decided to leave. From there, I went across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. I wanted to work in grid FM 27, Fox Mike 27, which is almost entirely on the Eastern shore, but there's also one part of it that's not. I went to Cape Charles. Cape Charles is in Fox Mike 17, which is my home grid. And it almost doesn't make sense to work there because I could do that from home, but I wanted to see if I could get my signal across the Chesapeake Bay and to reach some friends at home and even my home repeater. Repeater contacts don't count, of course, but I wanted to see if I could do it. And I did, it was a piece of cake. So uh, there goes Fox Mike 17. I knocked out some contacts there and then I drove to Exmoor, Virginia. Exmoor, Virginia is in FM 27. I didn't necessarily need to make contacts there because my plan, my big plan was to be at Chincoteague National Seashore. I think that's the name of the park, but there's a beach there and I wanted to get pictures on the beach and that is Fox Mike 27. I went ahead and went to Exmoor, which is a more for affordable place to stay. Made some contacts while I was parked there. Went inside, got a good night's sleep and got up at uh, five o'clock, I think that morning, the next morning. Got on the road at 545 and made my way to Chincoteague. I had some breakfast along the way and did some other things. I can't remember. I 
set up in Chincoteague, took some photos, made a few contacts, not as many as I had hoped, and then uh, did a parks on the air activation. So that was, I added HF frequencies to the VHF frequencies combined. HF contacts do not count for the contest, but VHF and HF contacts do count for parks on the air. So I did a park activation, left Chincoteague, and on my way out of town, I heard a couple of guys chatting on two meters, so 144.2 megahertz. And so I called them and we wound up, it's called, uh, uh, is it called working the bands, running the bands? Anyway, we made the contact there on 144.200 and then moved to 50.135-ish, somewhere around there, and then jumped to 432.100. So I made contacts with both of those guys. One of them was quite local. He, he might have even been in Chincoteague itself. The other one was way up in Connecticut. So it was really cool to get UHF and VHF signals up that far. Summertime is great. And I was it was very easy for me to take these calls for granted. And speaking of taking these calls for granted, the places that I'm going to tell you that I went or I'll show you on a map, there is a station near home. He's probably still 20 or 30 miles from my house, KD4AA. He's in a town called Kilmarnock, I think that's how you say it, Kilmarnock, Virginia. He was able to talk to me everywhere I went and I to him. So uh, a lot of the credit I think goes to his antenna, but he also says that mine was performing very well too. So anyway, I left uh, Chincoteague, drove up the road to the next grid. I can't remember what grid it is, FM 28. Someplace forgettable, but I stopped and found a place to operate, make some contacts there. And then it was off to go toward Annapolis. I was going to go across the Maryland's, I think they call it the Bay, the, the Bay Bridge. It has a name, but I don't remember it. But before I crossed that bridge, FM 29 is just right up the road. So I went ahead and flew up to FM 29, got to a very nice rest stop there, and made some contacts from FM 29. Then I went to cross the bridge. What a wreck that place was. Uh, traffic was horrendous. I've experienced bad traffic around here in Chicago, in Washington, D.C., Houston. But this, what a, what a disaster uh, being held up in traffic like that. And by the way, as I drove, every time I stopped someplace, I recognized that I was falling further and further behind schedule. So this big traffic backup really put a dent in my, in my schedule. My goal was to get to Sandy Point State Park and make some contacts there and activate it as a POTA entity. And I did that, but my goodness, this place was so crowded. Uh, apparently there's a beach there. Who knew? I know I didn't know, but everybody in the area from who knows how far away wanted to go to the beach. So uh, lots of parking challenges there and then double parking. And so I had to be very careful to to keep an eye on people parking around me to make sure they didn't double park and block me in because the car next to me, they were blocking in somebody else. And so uh, uh, anger was to be afoot. So I kept my eyes open for that. So anyway, I left the park and one of these, as I was falling behind schedule, I left off my stop for grid FM 18. I knew that I'd be in 18 long enough to make plenty of FTA contacts as I drove. And I, I think Sandy Point is in FM 19. So I made these contacts in FM 19, 18. I let FT8 run. And by the way, I, I did run FT8 while I was driving. And I know that sounds dangerous, but it's really not. I had just had laptop open over here and you push uh, control, oh, alt and N, and that enables the transmitter in I call CQ. If somebody answers me, then it goes through the sequence automatically, and then it gets to the end and says the Roger Roger, and up pops a window saying, do you want to log this? So then I just hit enter, no mouse action. I'm not searching for the yes or the okay or any of that other stuff. I hit enter, it logs the contact, and then I hit alt in again. So once I got held up at Sandy Point, and then I was out on the road, I realized, man, I am not going to make it to my next two stops. I mean, I could do it, but it was at that point, it was six o'clock, I think. And I was still three hours from my next stop, which was still three hours from home. And I had two more stops that I was gonna make. So I decided to just pull 
FM 0708 and one other out there. I will flash it up because it's one that I wasn't thinking I was going to do, uh, but I threw it on the schedule anyway. I just took those grids off and decided to go straight home. So as I drove home, I was in FM 18 and then that got me down back into FM 17, my home grid, and I worked FT8 most of the way. Once I made it to Richmond, at that point, I am about an hour from home, maybe uh, 30 to 40 miles from some of my friends at home. And we have, every Sunday we do, called the Crab's Net. Check it out sometime if you're anywhere in the east and have a good six meter setup. Every Sunday at 8 p.m. local, 50.180 megahertz, upper sideband, horizontally polarized. It's the best signal into this net. And we have a couple guys that can get in from Connecticut or the Northeast and I check in. So I went ahead and turned on the radio and took a listen. And by then the sun was down and the, you know, the propagation wasn't quite there. I was getting a lot of noise. And so I wasn't optimistic about it, but then I started to pick things up. So I made a few voice contacts on six meters on my last stretch home. In the end, I made contact with 78 stations. Actually, that's not accurate. I made 78 contacts. Some of them were with the same station more than once. KD4AA, for example, I roved through seven grids and he made contact with me in six of them. And some of our, some of our contacts were on more than just six meters. So we did six meters and two meters. And then there's a, the, the station that we made contact with on six, two and 432 and a station up in Connecticut, I think it's K1TEO, made contact with him at least on six and two. I don't remember if we did a 432 or not. I'll note if we did. And uh, otherwise, most of the contacts were unique. And the distances range from all over the east out to say Texas, Missouri, and even one contact in Los Angeles. And I don't remember if that was voice or FT8. If it was FT8, that's not terribly miraculous. Maybe a little bit. If it was on voice, then that's fantastic. That's a band opening to say the very least. So let's see, let me cover some lessons learned, some things that I maybe could do better next time. Well, for starters, my fuses, they will be with me. I have them in a different box because of the container that I have them in. And it was just seemingly more convenient to have them in that box, but that box is not full of radio stuff. It's got other stuff in it, right? So I decided to leave that home and that was a bad move. So I'm gonna change that up and do something different next time. Next, uh, I wasn't quite ready to do FT8. I bought a piece of new, new equipment and I hadn't put it in yet. I did install it, I think in Cape Charles, maybe, no, it was in First Landing State Park. I, I installed it there. So that's why I didn't do any FT8 or get to my POTA activation because I was making sure that my FT8 equipment worked. That takes me to um, a plan that I've implemented. I just didn't do it for this VHF contest. Don't take on new projects up to a week before some special event because things go wrong. Thankfully though, this digi rig setup was super smooth, super easy, and it worked fabulous. So I was able to get up and running in probably 30 minutes. Uh, other lessons, you know, I don't know if this is a lesson or it's just something to wonder. I left my omnidirectional loop antennas at home and decided to run with just my, my beams. And they were effective, but if I'm calling CQ and I'm pointing this way, people behind me aren't going to hear me or I'm not going to hear them. So should I run with loops and beams? I know that when I have them set up the way they're currently arranged, the lowest beam interferes with my six meter loop. So I might have to do something different with my separation scheme. I'll figure something out there. So I haven't completely decided. Uh, what else? I know there were more lessons learned. Oh, my timeline, holy cow. I was continuously falling behind. I did not account in my travel time. I completely blew it and didn't account for meals, restroom stops, fuel stops. I only made a couple of fuel stops, but those are all time consuming and they dig into the schedule. So what I'm going to do is uh, double the amount of time that I allow for travel. That way, if I stop for a meal or make that restroom stop, I'm covered. And I think I'm going to double my on-station operation time as well, because I think I want to target more parks in the future. They're public. 
they're easy. I don't have to worry about uh, upsetting anybody at a, at a, say, at a parking lot or something like that. It, it didn't happen, but it, it could, I guess. And that will give me more time to make more contacts, perhaps. And if I'm in a park, then I can make a separate effort for parks on the air and have more time for that. Let's see, so that takes care of the time. Is Now, if I spread everything out like that, then I'm not going to have as many grid squares on my schedule. But look, I had 10 on my schedule. I only made it to seven anyway. So I think it's better to make it to and work the ones that are on the schedule than it is to schedule something and then not make it. Makes you feel like a failure. <laughs> so uh, I didn't fail to execute. I failed to plan accordingly. So uh, I'll have to get that straight next time. Was there anything else? I need to work on my logging because I I didn't make any voice contacts on the move. Well, that's not true. I made two, but I don't like to because I, you know, I'm trying to keep my log in order. And so I only, I only log when I'm stopped, except for FT8, and then I merge my logs after the fact. I, I think I want to try to implement some sort of logging for when the car is moving. That way I can talk on the radio do my voice log and like i said i made three contacts that way but i i should have made more my next contest i am going to participate in the let's see cq's vhf i think it's called worldwide vhf contest and that's only on six meters and two meters and i'm not going to do such a big ambitious row but i think i will do either four or six grids and I will try to make more contacts than I did last year. Again, all I want to do is improve, do something better than I did last year. So uh, last year, I think I made 35 contacts in that. And if I can do 70 or 100, 100 would be phenomenal. If I can do 100 contacts, I'll be happy with that. So I don't know. Tell me what you think, post comments below. Maybe you've got some hints on how I could have done something a little better. As always, I'm open to comments and suggestions. And I thank you for being here. Take care.